Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. So last week I shared with you a question that Einstein asked and he said it's the most important question you could ever ask yourself. And the question was, do you live in a friendly or a hostile universe? And during last week's episode, I then shared that I was going to talk to you this week about building trust and how to develop trust. And I wrote a blog on it, but it ended up being such um, an in-depth and quite lengthy <laughs> subject that I've actually split it into two. So you'll get one part this week and you'll get the second part next week. And this week we're going to be looking at building trust um, in people. So between you and your partner, your friends and everything else. And next week we're going to be looking at building trust with life, with the universe, with source, whatever you want to call it. And this particular topic is something that took me quite a while to get. I don't know if I'm just particularly slow or if this is indicative of what other people have experienced as well, but I'll share it from my point of view and you can be the one to judge. So, when I was very young, I was incredibly trusting. I, I trusted everybody. I think I was, as I said, I don't know if this is indicative to me or if everyone's the same, but I was a very trusting person. I, I just couldn't understand why people would do mean things to other people. It just boggled my mind. But as I went through life, I realized that people do sometimes do mean things to people. And I grew a little bit more distrustful. And as I learnt about the subconscious mind and how it automates our behaviour and how it's there to ensure our survival, and I learnt about becoming more conscious and how you can step out of those patterns and choose your life, and realising that the majority of people in this world are still living in subconscious sort of automated behaviour, I sort of pulled away from trusting people because I didn't think that they're, what they were being, who they were being, was really the truth of who they actually were. And how can you trust somebody's ego, somebody's subconscious programming? You're not really trusting them, you're just trusting the programming. So although I believed in people and I loved people and I cared about them, trusting them was something that I kind of reserved for. <laughs> well, just I just didn't. Um, and it wasn't done out of malice or trying to be mean. It was just that I, I realised that people are fallible and that certain things trigger us. And we can't help it when we get triggered, we tend to just react. Um, so understanding all of that, trusting somebody seemed a little bit odd. Anyway, <laughs> as you can tell, this particular topic was quite charged for me, hence splitting it into two. I also believed that I would only really trust people if they'd earned my trust. It was something that was not freely given away. And I haven't actually mentioned this in the blog, even though I did make a note of it. Um, but I wanted to share it anyway, is that if somebody says to me, oh, trust me, or you must trust me, or you have to trust me, it's normally a red flag for me. Normally, as soon as someone says that, the red flag goes up and I go, well, if you think that you've got to convince me to trust you, there's no ways I'm going to trust you. <laughs> and what I also realised as I was writing this or thinking about it over the last week or so, was that trust means different things to different people. So quite often, if people share the same religion, they're more likely to trust each other. They're more likely to be suspicious of somebody who doesn't share the same religion as them or the same beliefs as them. So trust is something that we sort of judge whether somebody's trustworthy or untrustworthy on a whole load of circumstances that are to do with our beliefs, which really, when you think about trust, is not really how it should be. So I've shared why trust for me was something that I had a few issues with. <laughs> but I also realised that trusting was something that was really important because not trusting somebody creates space. It creates disconnection. It creates suspicion and not fully stepping in with your whole heart. And that really is quite a lonely existence. So realising that, I decided that I needed to explore trust more and understand it more and learn to trust because I obviously had a bit of a problem with it. <laughs> and what I realised is that trusting somebody is a lot like believing in them. I've actually done an episode on this quite a while before about building self-belief or believing in others. And what I realised when I was exploring belief is that telling someone that they should believe what you're saying does not mean they will believe it. 
But if you act in a believable way and in a way that has integrity, then the person is far more likely to believe you when you try to lift them up and when you believe in them. So for instance, say um, if I compliment one of my sons, they're less likely to believe me because I'm their mother. And as they say, even if it is the truth, you're my mother, you have to believe in me. But if it was somebody who they admired, who they respected, that lived in integrity, and that person complimented them, for them, it would mean a great deal. So believing in somebody can really lift somebody up. It can change their own behavior. Having somebody believe in you can make you try harder, can make you believe in yourself, can change the whole trajectory of what you're doing. And I think that trusting is the same. I think that if you trust somebody, but you also have to be trustworthy, if you really trust somebody, it can change the relationship between the both of you. So to explain or to demonstrate what I'm trying to share with you, um, I'm going to share a little example of a very good friend of mine. The reason I'm going to share this example with you is because who we're being affects how people interact with us on so many intricate ways. And this, hopefully this example will demonstrate that. So on this consciousness journey that I've been on, I've realised that keeping my word is incredibly important, not just to myself, but to other people and the relationships that I have between, well, with myself and with other people. That if I keep my word, um, people will respect me, they trust me, they, um, they know that I'll do what I say I'm going to do, I become dependable. I know if I don't keep my word, all of those other things fall by the wayside. So I try really hard to keep my word. It's very important to me. If I say I'm going to be somewhere and I'm going to do something, I do everything I can to be there and to do that. However, this wonderful friend of mine doesn't know any of these things. <laughs> and whenever I arrange to meet them, they never could turn up on time. In fact, they're normally around about an hour late. Now, a while ago, what I realised was because I know that this person is always late, that I had started modifying my behaviour because of how they were behaving, even though I'm more aware and more conscious of what I do and why I do it. So initially I'd turn up and kind of feel a bit kind of tense and resigned because I knew that they were going to be late. I just knew it. <laughs> I mean, normally an hour late is a fair amount of time late. And then I kind of started, my, my ego started getting defensive and I kind of started planning, well, what would happen if um, I turned up late? if I just decided to be late and not be on time. And then I kind of thought, well, maybe what if I told them that we were meeting an hour later than we were and I just showed up at the time that I had intended to show up. And I realized that all of this was in reaction to who that person was being. Eventually, what I decided to do was to be me. I show up on time, but I just make sure I take a really good book or something I want to work on. And that way I'm perfectly content to sit there and wait and there's no resistance to it. But if I didn't know all of the things that I know, I would have started reacting to that person and what they were doing. And the reason I'm sharing this is because going back to trust and belief, who we're being affects everyone and how they interact with us on so many levels. And also that the reverse of what I've shown you is also true. So if you're somebody that generally well, that turns up on time, somebody who keeps their word, somebody that has quite high standards, then other people respond to that as well in a different way. My friend might not have. <laughs> we didn't actually meet that many times and now we live very far away so it just doesn't ever happen. But generally speaking, people who know me know that I turn up on time. And I've, I know because people have told me that they sometimes are quite anxious to make sure that they're on time because they know of who I am and what I do and why I do it. So the example I gave you is obviously how negatively, you know, somebody behaving, I mean negative, whatever, it's all supposition, but how somebody's behavior can affect how those around them interact. But also the opposite's true. So if somebody has very positive behavior, they can actually help elevate people to behave better than they normally would do with more consideration, more thoughtfulness, more trust, more whatever. And, and that's kind of the spin I'm taking on this whole trust thing. Something else I'd like to share with you as well is that if you're in an intimate relationship with somebody or a close relationship, it doesn't have to be intimate, and that person doesn't trust you, how does that make you feel 
and how do you react? Because not being trusted can sometimes cause people to react to that as well. So the conclusion that I've come to is that trust is a two-way thing, but that if you want to trust people, if you want to learn about trust and build trust, it starts with you or with me. I choose to trust people that I'm close to. So as I've said, trust to me is something that I've chosen to do, but I want to share something a little bit more deeply about trust as well. And, and that is that I think quite often we get confused between trusting somebody and giving our power away. Now, when we give our power away to somebody, we make that person responsible for our happiness, our finances, our health, um, our vitality, our peace of mind, whatever it is. And, and we say that we're trusting that person. But to me, that's not trust. That's giving your power away. And what I know and what I've experienced with people, with all of the clients that I've had over all the years that I've been doing this, is that yes, as in the beginning I said to you how I know that our subconscious patterning causes us to behave in a certain way. But I also know that when you've experienced the truth of who you really are, when you've seen deep down into your soul and you've seen that eternal part of you, you'll know that that part of you is pure love, it's pure bliss. And there's something incredible about it. And each of us has our own flavor to that particular spark inside of us. And when I trust somebody, I trust that they're doing the very best in their life that they can with the experiences that they've had and with the wisdom and knowledge that they have. And that's where my trust comes from. So I do trust people deeply, very deeply. I trust that they're doing the very best that they can. But I don't try, well, I try, I'm still learning. <laughs> By no means a guru. I do try not to give my power away. And I think that to me was the biggest thing that I learned about doing this exploration and deep dive into trust this week, is that there's that, that differentiation, that you can trust somebody and not necessarily give your power away to them. And I think that's where mistrust is built, is when we give our power away and we get hurt by people. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I've certainly enjoyed thinking about it and uh, deep diving into it and pondering it over the last week. And next week, I'm going to share with you how to trust life, the universe source, and how to build that relationship up. If you want to access any of my resources, my free courses, my courses, my coaching, or anything like that, there's a link to my website in the show notes below, along with links to any of the other things that I've spoken about during this episode. So much love from me to you. Have a lovely week. Bye-bye.